everybody and welcome to another quick edit. So today I'm gonna take these raw files, stitch them together into an HDR, edit it in Lightroom, do all of the basics there, then take it into Luminar towards the end and hopefully end up with a picture like this. Alright, so as you can see here I've got my HDR pictures and I still need to stitch them together. So first of all, just gonna enable profile corrections and chromatic variation removal, select all of the other ones, synchronize, just check all of the adjustments you've done and synchronize. Then I can right click photo merge HDR, got my preview here, auto align, low de ghosting because of the clouds here and just merge and again and through the power of video editing it's already done. So this is what it's gonna look like after the stitching and it's very underwhelming at first but here if you bring up the exposure by crazy amounts you can see that you still have a ton of shadow detail that you would never be able to have with a single picture. So it really makes sense to sit together and shoot in HDR if you have very bright skies as well as very dark trees and shadows. Otherwise, of course, you don't really need it. So let's get started here with the editing and first of all, I'm definitely gonna raise the exposure a bit. It's just too dark how it is right now. And I'm also gonna bring up the whites a little bit. Bringing up the shadows will really bring up everything as you can see here. Very nice starting point. And then also bringing down the highlights kind of counteracts that. You always wanna fine tune the sliders of course, but I think I'm gonna add a bit of contrast here. Actually bring up, no, no, let's bring, yeah, let's bring up the blacks and bring a little bit clarity into the entire picture bring a bit of vibrance in there and I'd really usually prefer vibrance because it will add colors way more smartly then let's go down to the tonal curve and just fine-tune all of the highlights again because I do want to have an overall relatively balanced picture but I still want to have some contrast, some bright parts, and especially for landscapes and stuff like that, you wanna have a very spread out histogram. So if I would just go back to the, yeah, to the shadows, you can see everything is leaning to the left. If I would do the opposite, everything is leaning to the right. Not really what I wanna do at all. I really wanna have it nicely spread out and have detail in all of the areas here. So I think that actually looks pretty good in terms of the exposure. So another trick that I have is going into the split toning. And as you can see, the entire picture is kind of blue, not really, not really where I want it to be for a sunset. So I'm gonna go here into the highlights, just click on this little box. Now the great thing here is that you can really choose your saturation and how much hue you want. It's, it gives you so much more option. And also because you're just adding color in the highlights, it will look a lot better and more natural at the end. So I'm gonna go back into the shadows though and just add a little bit of yeah, a little bit of magenta for additional colors in the shadows. You want to be especially careful with the shadows, but as you can see here, before split toning, after, looks so much better in my opinion. And going back into the basics, I'm just gonna fine tune the color temperature, maybe even bring it up and make it a little bit warmer there as well and add some magenta in there. So I think that looks pretty good overall. However, there is a thing that I really don't like here and that is the, the yellow tones. It really looks very greenish. So I'm gonna go into the HSL here and just wanna bring the color hue to a more yellow orangey color. That definitely looks so much better. And while I'm at it, maybe I'll even wanna change the blues in the sky a bit. Yeah, just a little bit less dark and the luminance, you know, all kind of small detailed adjustments that's really gonna vary from picture to picture. I showed you the before and after, it really looks good in terms of the colors and the exposure and everything, but there is some more detailed adjustments I wanna do. So first of all, I'm gonna crop everything. So there's just too much sky that isn't needed, that is just empty. So I'm gonna crop it to a bit more of a panoramic aspect ratio like this and I actually wanna have really a lot of this road because as you can see, the road really leads you into the picture. If Lightroom would load, there we go. So it really leads you into the picture towards the trees and I think it is very important to have it contrary to the sky, which is just too much on the top. Another thing that you will definitely be able to see is that this area is just way too bright. But the great thing is, because we have all of this detail from the HDR file, we're gonna have no problem recovering it. So for that, let's just quickly grab a rail filter, invert the mask and feather at 100. So it's really all nice and soft and very organically blending in into the rest of the picture. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure, minus highlights and actually bring up the shadows. 
so these kind of clouds don't get too dark if there's some overlap. So just gonna fine adjust that and that already looks so much better and also gonna do the same thing with the top right and as you can see it already recovers a lot of this color. Uh, it's really a super bright part right here but with just three filters I think it looks so much better and this is just kind of the starting point. So now the only other thing that I want to do here in Lightroom is just quickly grab a graduated filter and drag one over the bottom and actually add some clarity and maybe even sharpness here. So the reason I'm doing all of that is because a dark foreground will really help to add differentiation, lead you into the picture, and I think it just looks so much more interesting just in terms of the exposure. Now the reason I'm adding plus clarity plus sharpness here is because if you have a very crisp foreground, you can really work with differentiation even further and then just add kind of an Orton effect uh, later on in the background. So this is actually where I'm gonna leave it at in Lightroom and now I'm just gonna right click edit in Luminar and I'm gonna do all of my other adjustments there. So yes, let's copy that and Luminar is actually sponsoring this video so keep that in mind while I edit stuff here. But at the same time, I, I honestly think it's a super cool tool to do some of the more yeah, advanced adjustments that you can just not do in Lightroom. And first of all here, I'm gonna boost the accent slider. It just makes everything a little bit more dynamic. As long as you don't go too far, then it just looks absolutely terrible. Then I'm gonna add quickly some vignetting, just kind of the size, stuff like that, and place the center more towards the trees, so the vignetting is around these trees rather than just the actual center. And now what I want to do for the most part, let's just quickly add a new adjustment layer and search for the Orton effect. So what the Orton effect is, is actually kind of a, a very pleasing blur. And let me just show you here as I bring the Orton effect to the right. It's kind of, uh, yeah, you don't want to use it over the entire picture, but if you use it locally, which is what I'm going to do here with the brush right there, uh, you can really add a lot of differentiation over just some areas. And again, I really like to add kind of a blur and less clarity and all of that stuff over the background and then have a very crisp, very clear foreground. That way you can really add interest additionally to just color and exposure. So let's just do that real quick, a little bit over the leaves right here. Then I'm just gonna bring the opacity all the way to the right and brush over the sky because it's already long exposure, blurry sky stuff. So I just wanna enhance that and the Orton effect is really nice for that. So let's just do that, mm, looks pretty good. And I don't know, maybe just here. And I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. So just to show you before the Orton effect and after, I think it's a really cool effect and there's really no way you, that you can do it in Lightroom to that extent. So let's add another one right here. And what I wanna do is first of all, let's add the golden hour filter. I wanna add some warmth and some color here with that and add another filter, the accent slider actually here. And here I just wanna boost it even more. Now I'm gonna do this just for a local adjustment. So the top right, right here and something like that. Yeah, I think that actually looks really, really good. Let's apply that. And as a very last thing here for the entire edit, I think I'm just gonna add another layer real quick and here go into uh, anything really, go into landscape because I just wanna have some minus exposure and probably some contrast as well. And then grab the brush right here, pass it here at around 50 and just brush in some minus exposure over some areas because if you just have everything super bright and dynamic, I mean, it's great, but you wanna have at least some dark parts and this is exactly why I'm using this brush right here. Just some areas could use a bit more, a little bit less extreme than all of the other adjustments, but it can really help to get some contrast back that you would otherwise not have. And you know what, I lied. This is gonna be the last adjustment that I'm doing right now. And again, just anything, going to landscape here and add some plus exposure for now and actually add a ton of plus whites and bring up the shadows as well. And for all of that, I'm actually gonna grab a rail filter over these trees here, make sure I invert the adjustment and just make that a bit brighter. So it really leads you into the picture, leads you towards this bright spot, which again really helps with the whole composition from the row to the to the actual trees. So let's just keep it at that, apply, and a little real quick go into the brush 
to just minus brush some of the spill here. And you know what, let me just go back to the actual minus adjustment layer, minus exposure adjustment layer, grab it real quick. A graduated filter over the top, bottom left, I can't even speak anymore, apply that. So to show you to the left is before any of the luminar adjustments, to the right is after. As you can see, it's not a huge crazy difference because I already did pretty much, you know, most of the basic stuff in Lightroom. It's just kind of an enhancement for some of the color contrast and I especially like the Orton effect here. But with that being said, I'm gonna show you real quick all of the pictures again. This is the raw file without any adjustments, well actually just HDR file. This is the picture after all of the editing in Lightroom. And then this is the picture after all of the Luminar adjustments. And five hours later, welcome again to the outro. The AC300 decided to overheat for no reason. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And you know, if you want to check out Luminar, a link to a 14 day free trial for you guys will be in the video description below if you want to check it out. And also a thing, so this is just a portfolio book I pretty much printed for myself and a couple of weeks ago. And I was curious to know whether you guys would like to see a video about it, you know, just kind of kind of show off the book because some of these pictures look so good compared to just on screen. Just let me know, comment or like the video and I might do a video about this in the future. So other than that, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and have a wonderful day. Goodbye guys. Well, it was a weird outro. Outros are always the weirdest to make.